Oh, wow. Wow, the technology, it's really on the next level. So, welcome. My name is uh, Hjati Halmarsson, easily pronounceable. Uh, I'm an animator, I come from Iceland, I'm at the Blinder Institute at the moment, and uh, here's my really outdated showreel. <laughs> the adventures you will have all the lives you ever wanted. All you've been missing. Here, this is the best product we have in store. Uh. Variable spin speed, excellent tumble performance in one handy device. Squeaky clean. Wait, wait, wait. How does this thing work? I mean, how do I make it work? No, you don't. I just turned it on for you. Okay. It's, uh, it's been an interesting journey. Um, so that old guy there at the bottom right, uh, it's not like he knows everything, but he knows a little bit more than, you know, that Mr. Mustache over there. And he knows more than Mr. I'm uh, finishing a sandwich over there. So uh, the thing I wanted to do was kind of talk a little bit about that guy, um, just his perspective. So this guy, he doesn't know anything about animation, really. Like, he grew up watching cartoons. Uh, he studied computer science, and he has some background in, in programming. But he really doesn't know that much about the, kind of the craft of animation. And uh, he's going he's gonna, to, you know, Google it. Like, if he's interested about it, he's like, animation, yeah. Like, let's, let's see what it's all about. And he's going to find, you know, articles, uh, blogs about animation, clickbaity titles, six steps to becoming an animator, whatever, like a lot of crap. Um, but the thing is, a lot of it is going to say something similar. It's always going to be that thing. It's like the 12 principles of animation, you know, you've got, you got to learn them. And you wonder, like, okay, what's that? And, you know, what is the most logical step? You Google it. Uh, and it's like, okay, whoa, 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 there's like a Wikipedia article all about it. So <coughs> pre pretend that link was blue. Okay, wow, let's click it. Uh, yeah, all right. So it's the, all the citations are pointing at one book, The Illusion of Life. It's a brilliant book. I highly recommend it. It's by two legendary uh, animators, Disney animators. And, uh, you know, you go down the list, then you see explanations, you see some examples, and it's great. Uh, and if we just pull up that list, so those are the 12 principles. Uh, now, wow, okay, hmm, interesting. So this computer makes it actually a little bit different. So now it's going really far down. So I wonder if it'll cut any information that's vital. But let's continue. Uh, <laughs> so we want to look at this through kind of the eyes of, oh, Jesus, it's okay. Things are going on top of each other. Interesting. Um, from the new perspective. And this guy, he doesn't really know that you know, 
anticipation state. I mean, these are words that are in the English vocabulary, but all of these have kind of different terminologies within the craft of animation. So, you know, he looks at it and he understands, you know, I know what time it is, you know, time, it's a clock, it's, a, you know, it's like a donk, 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 or whatever. But he maybe won't understand the fundamentals of that terminology within this context. So he'll look at it and it's not, oof, wow, nothing adds up. Okay, great. Ah, and making presentations, yes. Animation, yeah, maybe. Um, but right at the end of that list, there's this one thing that I want to get to, and it's uh, appeal. Um, and it, it, it's basically, it's, a, it's almost like stating, just, just make it look good. So uh, you're trying to learn a craft, woodmanship, uh, like crafting, whatever it is, painting. And you know, you're like, oh man, I gotta learn the principles, the kind of cornerstones of this craft. And one of them is, just make it look good. <laughs> and it's like, thanks buddy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of help, you know? You know you're, it doesn't really get you anywhere. Uh, really, if you think about it on those, those terms. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe it's the fact that English isn't my first language. So maybe it has to do with, uh, it means something slightly different than I think it is. Uh, so, you know, you go to Google and it's like, nope, that's, uh, that's kind of the thing I had. So, you know, I guess what's appealing to me and what's appealing to you, it's, it's all kind of subjective. So I guess it's all subjective. So you have a cornerstone within a craft that's subjective. And it's like, well, I don't know. Like, no, that's, that's not really what it is. I know. I study graphic design. So on an individual level, it's kind of seemingly subjective. You know? And this applies to just about anything, any kind of a topic, uh, you know, what people like and don't like. And remember, this is already like shrinking it down to only talking about humans. I mean, you know, th that's already taken down. Like your favorite color is not on the infrared spectrum, right? You know, it's probably within the range of the things you can see, right? So you're already kind of honing it down. So on an individual level, you might think, you know, like, you know, Cyprian over here, he likes something, I don't like something. It's all relative, you know, it's all subjective. But if you think about it, no, oh, it's all, ah, why, why? Um, if you go up and like, you know, pretend that that's a scale and it goes all the way up to, I don't know, all of humanity, uh, you're going you're gonna to find these trends, you're going to find these different things, like these patterns where you realize, okay, some things, you know, you can find things that are a little bit fuzzy, but some things, they're really obviously more appealing to the general public than others. Uh, so if you take a really basic example, so we propose this question, does chocolate taste good? And you ask John over here and he's like, no. And you're like, well, you know, I kind of like chocolate. So my conclusion is 50% of humanity doesn't like chocolate. And, you know, that's not really a great conclusion. So, of course, if you scale it up and if you like take that sample size of two, which is not really helpful, and you scale it up, you might find that, you know, there's some background noise happening, of course, in any statistics, but it's going to be overwhelming. Oh, that's supposed to be 92%, by the way. Overwhelmingly uh, positive. So if you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that, you know, if I bring chocolate <laughs> to the bar mitzvah or whatever, it's going to, I know, I know. Um, so let's take it a little bit closer to animation. So you have subject A and subject B. These are character designs. These were crafted by human beings. So A is, by the way, uh, he's, he's some kind of a mascot on a, on a, on a Dutch coupon on, in my local supermarket. Creep, creeps me out every time I go to the supermarket. He, he's there staring at me. I don't know his name, I don't know anything, but yeah. Um, so let's say, for example, we propose to John here, um, A or B, which, which is more appealing to you? And he goes, well, A, I mean, I grew up in a Dutch local supermarket uh, with this guy. I'm really fond of him, he's brilliant. Uh, I mean, well, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if we kind of, you know, go a little bit wider, and of course there's a little better background noise, you find that B is the more prominent kind of appealing character. Now remember, this is not like, this is not random, you know, this is not something for nature, this is something designed by a person. Like, there's a designer that's making all these different choices, and some of those choices are influencing each other in such a way that it's appealing. So that means somebody crafted one of these things, in a way that was more appealing. What was it? What is it? You know, what, what decision was that? Um, we could apply this to so many different things. 
Now, uh, now the, the example I just did was taste, and another example I did was more like character design-ish. I mean, there's a bit of overlap going on. But you, know, you could go into a lot of different topics, and you might talk about sound or smell or whatever, and you might want to consider, like, okay, what is more appealing in this particular topic? And the problem is that we're using the same word, appeal, and then if you're trying to make a sound that's appealing, and then you talk to somebody that's an expert at making colors appealing, you know, and he, he, he's thinking about a color palette being appealing, and then you're thinking about sound being appealing, you might have a really long argument, because you think you're talking about the same thing, but you're not quite. You just, you just happen to be using the same word. So uh, let's hone it down more to just motion. And now I could actually do a really fancy example with characters, and I think that's <clears throat> what most of you guys are expecting, that I have like a really cool uh, video of, of like wacky animals having fun and whatnot. Problem is that if I want to make my point here, uh, it's too distracting, because then you won't be thinking about motion in and of itself as appealing. You'll be seeing all these other variables. You'll be seeing character design, lighting, texture, shading, you know, uh, all these different things, and they're going to kind of obscure the point. So to kind of hone it a bit down on only motion, because really the, the principles of animation are talking about motion. They're not necessarily talking about you know, the way somebody was designed, that's more character design. Um, I'll pay uh, a little caveat, you know, uh, a lot of times you're animating a character, which means he becomes your canvas. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Meaning that if he's really unappealing, then no amount of animation can save him, you know? Um, so with motion, I just did a little test. That's a GIF that should be playing right now. Imagine that this is playing at a normal speed. Now, if this were playing at a normal speed, you would be impressed. <laughs> but it's not, for some reason. Uh, OK, all right. Then uh, my entire example is not really there. OK, so this incorporates a lot of different things from uh, the principles. So it has spacing, it has timing, arcs, and squash and stretch. Uh, but what if you remove... OK, this really doesn't work with this example, <laughs> because if you're take one of them away and you play it, it still looks like nothing to you guys right now. <laughs> That's interesting. It's a GIF! <laughs> I know, I don't know. I, I made it specifically so it wouldn't be a video, so it would load really quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, not just a hat rack. <laughs> All right, so uh, most of my points are gone. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I do, sir. Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Wow, you're, and you're on the timer. Oh, Jesus. Okay, all right. This. Can I? Leak? Is, that, is it legal to take a break? Oh, it's in the rules. Oh, yes. Don't look at me writing my passport. Pass, passport. It's a <coughs> yeah. How did you know? No, it's sexy babe, sexy babe 69. XXX at Hotmail. What? Oh, no, there's an ointment for that. Okay, so stand in the light. Yes. I didn't even realize I was standing in the shadows. Sorry. Is F5 still? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The clicker? Yes, I think that would be helpful. Uh, no. No sound. I hope it's. Oh, ooh. <laughs> hope it's not playing some awkward like playlist that I have playing in my computer. So <clears throat> that would be great. <laughs> oh.
<laughs> Improvise? Computers will never take over this whole business. So 60 frames per second. 60 frames per second will never happen. It's not a thing. It's a fad. <laughs> now, OK, well, 60 seconds. Oh, it might happen. I know. It's just, I don't know. It's like, computers can no, they, computers cannot interpolate everything. No. Uh, it's, it's a tool. I mean, OK, like, would you, would you yeah. take a <gasps> wow. <laughs> Hitman just showed up. <laughs> yes. No, wait, where are you? Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Spin the floor? No, no, no. I, I saw a video that was so good, I can't copy it. I actually took it out of my like dancing routine at this moment. Still good, still good. What? I'm not allowed to ask people if they have questions, but I might as well. Hey, do you guys have questions? Oh, hey, wow, I'm on a soapbox. I can't do anything else. Motion paths are really important for Blender. It will improve animation severely. Uh, we have motion paths, but they're super, super, super slow, uh, heavy to calculate, quite insane. Uh, if we had them to certain distance, well, the only real person, the developer, that could really handle motion paths and, and bring them to the next level is somebody that has a lot of skill, a lot of talent, Somebody that understands the new dependency graph. Somebody that has maybe a Russian accent. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of people really in the world that could handle such responsibility. But you know, if they would just stand up. Yes! Yes! Yeah! All right. That is a binding contract according to the Dutch law. <laughs> So we're going to get motion pass in Blender. It'll be great. Yeah. Motion pass. Ah. No, 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 no. That's too much, too much, too much. Just good, just good motion pass and then. Yeah, baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. Yeah. What I really want? Mercedes. No, wait. Uh, what? Are, um, no, motion pass. Really? That's at the top of the list. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, more, more than um, the whole notion of like having the rigs be amazing, so much so that like you can just click the eyebrow and you don't have to have like widgets or whatever. It's like, well, you know, all right. But motion pass, it's more important. Yeah, th yeah to be honest, um, there are instances when you have hair on a character and it's so ingrained in the character design because it makes that character bigger. You really, you really need that information, it's true. Um, hold your laptop. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've, today I've learned that uh, GIFs are a medium that's kind of old and fragile, apparently. <laughs> Doesn't work in any kind of a computer. I thought it did. <laughs> yes, it's GIF. It's GIF. I'm not. How, how would I screw this up? I had one job. It's not pronounced GIF because I have uh, the speaker. So. <laughs> also, there's more than one creator of it, and that one guy was kind of weird. Oh, oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. It's, oh. <coughs> I'm using open source uh, software right now, just so everybody knows. Hey, did you stand up? No, Hitman stood up. You didn't stand up.
At this point, I'm uh, willing to give up and uh, just continue. It's all good. It's just. Wow! That's fine. No, that's good. What? But you see the difference, right? <laughs> a little bit. What is it? The other one was Oh, I gotta go back. This is not appealing enough. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so we have a situation where my boss needs to be the guy that presses the next button. Interesting. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad he had, a, you know, he had many career choices, but, uh, okay. <clears throat> so, previous, yes, please, thank you, thank you. So, this is the example that I made, you know, it has a little bit of, it has uh, pretty clear spacing, uh, timing, arc, squash, and stretch, and whatnot. And then, if you go to the next one, Mr. Boss, <laughs> it's kind of lacking in the spacing area, meaning that it's a little bit wonkier. Um, so that means it's, it's not, not as clear, and it kind of lacks a little bit something. And that something, we, we call it appeal, but like, you know, we're just using a word that kind of means appeal. So if you go to the next one, it's, it's just, oh, why? <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Boss? <laughs> you, do you guys see the difference, at least? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's say, for example, that the timing was a bit off. So you, you see the, the bounces, they're kind of dunk, 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 dunk. <laughs> and if you, if you took away the, yeah, next please, sir, Mr. Boss. You took the next, yes, 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 the press, yeah, the, yes. Uh, now the bounces, for example, they're even, but that makes it a bit less kind of interesting. It's not as, it's not as clear. And continue, please, Mr. Boss, yes. And uh, that's, I kind of, the, the, the idea was that I could click back and forth and then just keep going, yes. So we remove the arcs and uh, we break the software, yes. <laughs> oh man, this is going great. <laughs> Looks horrible. Next and next, like twice, please. Next one. This is subtle though, because in, in the next one, I took away the squash and stretch. It's really subtle, but you, f you kind of feel it. Like it doesn't, it's more rigid and it, it doesn't have the same thing. So if you go to the next one, this is returning back to it, you feel that little squash and it just makes it just a little bit more appealing. Okay, so I want to return to the list. Yeah, you can go to the next one and then, yeah. And then from there, we could probably go just full screen. I mean, yeah, yeah. I have none of these gifts anymore. I'm so glad right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Yay. <laughs> no! <laughs> Not yet. I'm way over time. Okay. Uh, so we got the 12 principles. Um, and what I wanted to do is just look at it a little bit from my perspective today, which is not the all-knowing wise guy, but it's more like, okay, I'm still learning. I know a bit more than I used to. And I want to kind of just talk a little bit about these principles because I think we might have to, I mean, you know, humans love making lists. That's, you know, six things to improve your health. Doctors hate him, blah, 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 like clickbaity thing. And, you know, it, it almost feels like some of these things were kind of just put into a list and maybe some things were kind of combined that shouldn't have been combined or not. And, um, and you know, all animators out there, just ready your pitchforks. Uh, with squash and stretch, I, I don't think it's, maybe it shouldn't be called squash and stretch because squash and stretch is the thing that happens when you apply the actual concept which, which kind of is mass oof. It should have been on the right side. Yeah, crazy stuff going on. Which, um, you're trying to keep the consistency of the mass and it just happens to 
result in a squash and stretch. So like if a, if a thing goes up against something else, it uh, kind of distorts. And that, uh, that mass needs to go somewhere, so it goes in the directions up and down or whatever. So, and also, um, you know, if you're a noob and you're looking at it, you might be like, wow, okay, so I'll just make everything feel like it's made out of rubber. Like, woo, woo, everything kind of starts squashing and stretching. Well, not quite, because this also applies to poses. So if I go down for a jump or whatever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squash down and then kind of stretch out as I jump. And yeah, I, so I'm not sure. I mean, this is not a sexy name at all. <laughs> Mask it sounds science-y or whatever. You know, maybe somebody else can come up with something better. Anticipation is great. It's brilliant. It's exactly what it is. It's, uh, you know, something just before something else. I want to throw a punch, you know. I can't just go, Wah. you know, I have to go back and then release it. So it's exactly what it says. Staging is, uh, it's solid, it covers what it is, but it's a bit vague, and it's on kind of like a Venn diagram, kind of overlaps some other areas. So it's overlapping a bit on layout and scene design and props and stuff, because they all matter in which, from the camera, where everything's placed. So maybe focus it a little bit more on the animation side. I'm not sure about this one, but like maybe add like readable poses, because that's kind of more in the area. But of course, that's a subgenre of staging. But I don't know. What are you thinking about? This is me thinking out loud, by the way. So this is not me coming from a mountain saying how it is. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so straight ahead uh, and post to post. It's actually missing one thing. It's missing uh, layered action, which is another method. So all these three things are methods. But they're all workflows. They're all ways of animating. They're not really principles. Like they're insanely important to learn in order to animate. But you wouldn't, you know, somebody comes to me and they're like, wow, like, you know, take a look at my shot. I, you know, I need some feedback. And I'm like, yeah, great, great, great. Uh, so those five frames, I think they would need a little bit more straight ahead animation. Like that says nothing, that nothing at all. It's more like, okay, you know, uh, any, any other thing could be more uh, useful, so mwah, I think we shouldn't actually have this there, because we're trying to make it consistent. We're trying to make a list of principles, not a list of principles, and then it happens to have this workflow thing kind of added to it. That arrow should be pointing at follow-through and overlapping action. <laughs> I think it was probably, it's probably a different font or something. Something happened. Um, follow through and overlapping action is, uh, is brilliant to learn. You've got to learn it. But those are two really separate things. Uh, in the beginning, when you're learning animation, you might confuse them. And sometimes they, because you're, you're just kind of bouncing a ball, like it doesn't have limbs, it doesn't have fingers, uh, you, don't, uh, you might not perceive it as a separate thing because it kind of overlaps a little bit. So, you know, follow through is like, uh, you know, I fall down, but then like I have a ponytail and that ponytail kind of comes down afterwards. So that's follow through. But uh, overlapping action, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I, have some, I have some gesture that I'm doing and I want to kind of lead with my hips so I, or lead with my head. Uh, and that's, so it's a little bit more of an acting choices, but you know, it's like a Venn diagram, like something overlaps or whatever. Um, but I think it should be separate, separated. That should be a line that goes over overlapping action, and then overlapping action is over there. <laughs> it's going great. Um, so basically, just split them up and make overlapping action its own thing. I also see uh, a lot of people that are new, and they kind of confuse the terminology, which is not helpful later on. Uh, if, you, if you confuse it in the beginning, then you're going to be kind of screwed later on. Uh, that's pointing at slow in and slow out, which, is, um, which I think is a little bit misleading, because we, we already have and we use another terminology for it, which is spacing. That should be scratching out the thing and then putting spacing there. Um, and spacing is brilliant, because the thing is, you know, you're moving something from A to B, and it's maybe a one second, and then it's 24 frames per second, that means that you have like 24 tuk, 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 tuk places in which that thing travels from A to B. But of course, those places have a little bit of space in between them. And you have to make a conscious design decision, how far is that space each time? So that might mean that you like move slowly and then kind of stop slowly. Or if you want, you can just slow in the middle 
That's the thing. Like if you have the principle called slow in and slow out, like it's already kind of leading you in a way, and it's not giving you the freedom. Arcs. Brilliant. It says what it is. I, okay, I usually say arcs in plural because it's usually more than one, but arc, yeah. <laughs> Secondary action. <laughs> so glad I rehearsed this 10 minutes ago. Uh, Secondary action, it's, it's one of my favorite things. Um, so let's say you have a character and he's, uh, he's giving a heartfelt speech about his divorce, but he's making a sandwich at the same time. Making a sandwich is a secondary action to what's happening in the scene. Uh, you might actually use it as like a subtext of what's going on. See you, dude. Uh, and it might actually strengthen it. Maybe you have somebody that's fidgeting with a pen, and then at some point, you know, he's being questioned, and then one question hits him right, right on the head, and his pen stops. So it's a thing that like, was just a background noise, but now it's become part of the scene. Uh, I see a lot of people confusing secondary action, though, with follow-through, for example. And, a little tangent, if we go back to that Wikipedia page, and this is just something that I discovered while doing this, if you scroll down to secondary action, it has the uh, definition, and it's perfect. It's brilliant. It's exactly what it is. But then it has an example, and it's wrong. It's exactly wrong. It has a little gif, like a weirdly animated gif of a horse, and it says secondary action, but it's actually follow-through. So, you know, if that noob came there and like, Ooh, wow, okay, I got to learn this thing. Okay, let's check out the example. It's not correct. Um, gets a bit confusing. <laughs> I think that's pointing at timing. <laughs> God damn it. Timing is so general. This list was supposed to look epic at the end, by the way, but it's going not that well. Um, timing is a bit general. It's a little bit vague. It covers what it is. But I, I think it could be a little bit improved with adding rhythm, not to arc, but to timing over there. Appeal is here at this moment. So, uh, and it's because even though rhythm is a sub, it's like, it's like part of timing, it's like a sub-sect of timing, it's just so important to animation that I kind of feel like if I'm reading a list of principles that rhythm should be there somewhere, you know, uh, mixing up rhythm, it, it can really like take your animation from one level to the next. <laughs> exaggeration. <laughs> it's funny, sorry. Uh, exaggeration is what it is. I mean, it's perfect. Exaggerating poses, exaggerating lip sync, um, blinking, lip sync, all that stuff, it's, it's just, it is what it is. It's brilliant. And this is solid drawing, which I think is the most outdated terminology within this list. Uh, it ha it's, it's closer to, of course, 2D animation, which is kind of this old school thing of drawing. And it has to do with learning how things should stay proportional in three-dimensional space, and you keep it consistent. So if Donald Duck moves his head around, like that, that shape kind of keeps going. And then that bleeds a little bit into character consistency. So you have maybe a character sheet, a model sheet. This is the way you know, Mickey Mouse looks like from all different angles. And then when you're doing these wacky poses, you should kind of return to it. Because animators were, um, back in the day, that didn't have the model sheets before that was a thing. You could see the, the, <laughs> you could see the characters kind of drift off. So their proportions were getting kind of wonky at the end, and then it might not sync up with the next shot. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's solid. But it, it's a little bit too specific to 2D animation. So I, I do wonder if, like, if we could phrase it in such a way that it encapsulates just animation in general. So maybe it's like character consistency or like stay on model or something like that. Um, that's not a sexy term also. I'm, I, I, you know, character consistency, that's, I don't know. Like maybe somebody can come up with something better. Um, and then this is all to lead up to the big guy that's halfway here, like he's kind of under the surface, it's like a shark fin, and he's coming in, <laughs> which is appeal. And the, <laughs> the controversial thing that I wanted to say about appeal that uh, should have been more dramatic when that line hit it and like took it out of the list is, I don't think appeal should be one of the principles of animation. Um, and that is because appeal is the outcome of using the principles of animation. 
So you use all these different principles, and you need to try to make them complement each other. But if you put that as a principle, then you're just kind of confusing the list. It kind of becomes something else than it is. Uh, you know, like if, if somebody asks me for feedback, and I go, you know, um, can you give it 10% more appeal? It doesn't say anything, but if I go, you know what, like that, you know, that hand gesture, I think the spacing at the end, it should favor a little bit more that end post, and it would make it more appealing. So, like, you, you use the principles to get appeals. You don't just, yes, appeal. You know, it's not a button you press. So, I think, I think just for, you know, so here you have the new, <clears throat> it's supposed to take out the number, um, the 11-ish uh, principles of animation. The number, of course, is arbitrary. Who cares what the number is? It's all about the actual content. And uh, if, you know, if that guy finished his sandwich finally, and then he would take a look at this thing uh, in proper, you know, uh, OK, proper setup and everything, <laughs> he would have an easier time <laughs> To understand, well, thank God I rehearsed it. <laughs> to understand the, the principles of animation. <laughs> it's just a jumble of mess at this point. <laughs> so it's not very helpful. I don't deserve it. Okay, okay. So final thoughts. <laughs> So to reiterate the things that were kind of wonkily said, uh, and anim oh, that also changes the phone. Animation is, it's, you know, just like you're learning uh, kind of woodcrafting or whatever, and they have their own words, the, the way they use them. You can't come into it thinking that, oh yeah, I know what that is because I know that word in a dictionary, in an English dictionary. Like it kind of, it might mean something slightly different. Uh, even the word appeal, in an everyday use, it's not, it's not exactly the same. So uh, it seems a lot of the times as like subjective, but a lot of times it isn't, and that's why these design choices kind of come into play because they manage to nudge it a little bit closer to the general appeal that you're looking for. Sometimes it's a niche niche thing, sometimes not, but it's a decision when you do it. Um, you know, there are exceptions. There's some things that are a little bit kind of more fuzzy, but I stand by it. Uh, animation. It's not a principle. It's the outcome of using the principles. And I think cramming it in that list is it just it makes it just a little bit confusing. Um, so for all of you animators out there that I, I actually see in the crowd uh, that are sharpening their pitchforks, uh, I don't claim to be like an authority. This is me kind of being slightly drunk talking about it. And I, kind of, I actually I am curious to think every, uh, about uh, what other animators are thinking. Uh, there's a joke somewhere down there, and it won't be there. <laughs> Over a pint of beer. Yes, thank you. <laughs> what? Do the hall talk tomorrow again? 